I'm Face White Camp, and this week I'm in the studio with Indianapolis Funk Fan Huckleberry Funk. I'm a huge fan of these guys, and I've seen them perform multiple times. Um, they do a fantastic job, and in addition to their work in the city, they have also accumulated a pretty good following in Bloomington. Uh, they're current. They actually just finished competition, the Battle of the Bands downtown, and we are now following up after that. Guys, thank you so much for being here today. Thanks, sure. Thanks for having us, man. All right, so first off, kind of introduction. Can we go around and say names and instruments played? Sure. Uh, I'm Alex. I play saxophone and keyboards. I'm Elias. I play guitar. I'm Dexter Clardy. I sing and I rap. I'm Byron Bowers. I play drums. And I'm Matt McConaughey and I play bass. All right, so first off, just after that introduction, how did the band originally start getting together? Um, so it was originally a group called the band Sweeney. Um, it was made of a bunch of different characters actually um, through a assortment of member changes and things like that. Um, some of the members that kind of started this Huck Funk group, we were all in a group at IU called the IU Soul Review. Um, our professor always used to ask us who was getting together and jamming after class and who wanted to really do music and the few of us that always had our hands up actually started to link up. And through that, um, I was asked to come and sub on a few gigs, and yeah, we kind of just... So, Sweeney was how it originally formed. What kind of stuff were you doing in that group? It was a the cover same band. Kind of stuff. It was a cover band that would do like R&B, punk, soul kind of stuff. What kind of cover, like what musicians were you covering? You yeah, know, like people? Stevie Wonder, Marvin Gaye, uh, you know, like Luther Vandross, that kind of stuff. Bruno like, Mars. Almond Brothers. Brothers. Yeah. Almond Brothers. Yeah, it was, a, it was pretty Brothers, eclectic. Yeah. It was mm -hmm. a very wide variety of stuff. And then actually. that transition to Huckleberry Funk forming, and that started in Bloomington kind of the same way after doing covers and that kind of thing? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the lead singer of that group for a while was actually kind of like my big brother in the IU Soul Review. Um, and so coming in, it was just kind of trying to fill those shoes, but also bring a different vibe and just through the members that were in it at that time especially we just started picking a lot of similar genre music but just a little bit taking taking more chances on some of the stuff we were playing so what drew you to kind of playing that down in bloomington was that did, did you feel that sound was needed and needed to be covered down there yeah honestly at the time we were playing I, there was a lot of like indie rock more so alternative yeah country yeah. things and not so much just party based funk music and again, in the Soul Review, that it was a class, but also we were learning about the history behind popular black music, and that was pretty much all the music we were playing. Um, Stars, Wind, and Fire, James Brown, all of that, and so we wanted to bring that um, in our own way. It was also group. just like way more fun to us. Way, too. <laughs> yeah. It was oh, just yeah. the music that yeah, I mean, for me personally, like I grew up listening to, like it was just natural. Like, it was I stuff that you felt comfortable playing, just right, like yeah. wanted to genu genuinely play. Mm -hmm. Exactly, it made sense to us, and like that's kind of how our original music kind of sounds too. It's just yeah. like a mix of all that, all of our old sounds. Yeah. And a lot of that came through that class. Was that? I mean, did you have that knowledge and that love of the music beforehand, or was that class kind of what set and forth? Like, okay, this is the kind of genre we want to play. This is something awesome we really like, and this is what we want to do. Yeah, um, I think all of us were true to our roots from the beginning. Um, it was just being in that class was kind of the tying piece for a lot of us to connect, um, which then tied us, because Matt wasn't personally in the Soul Review, but from us taking that experience and kind of actually knowing how to practice and how to just jam and be in a band, being able to come in and be in, a, in Huck Funk, it kind of just tied that all together. I fully understand, that's awesome. So outside of this, what were you doing outside the band? was? What, what were you doing? Just going to school and doing normal routine? Yep, going to school. Yeah, I was playing like, other gigs, <laughs> like freelancing, that kind of thing. I was in jazz school, just taking it day by day. <laughs> so then, yeah. but then the band kind of became the main focal point afterwards, like Huckleberry Funk during. So during, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Like, like I mean, like you said, all of us in our own regard were making our own kind of strides at doing music. I had attempted in like two or three other bands at the time, and they just weren't working. It was just not, didn't feel right. Um, trying to do solo music, and once I, it was just once we got together and that in this band specifically, it just felt right. Um, but yeah, doing school. Awesome, so I'm trying to think kind of where to take this next. So were you doing stuff outside of Indy as well at that time, or was this mainly Bloomington? 
It was mm-hmm. that time. I mean, yeah, it was mainly Bloomington, but we were doing some things. In Indian, we were doing things like in Cincinnati and surrounding areas. Um, I don't think we, we we had a focus of playing outside of Bloomington or locally as much, but I think the, the goal was to do more of that, even from that those early stages, was with the idea of like getting bigger and, and expanding our reach. But Indy was just, like, that was kind of clear, like this is where we want to get big? It was just kind of made sense as the next step, because originally I guess we thought Chicago was going to be the next move, but like... I mean, I think we've kind of just always, I've had bad juju every time we went to Chicago, like something bad has happened to, you know, my car got broken one time, I left my saxophone here one time, like, it's been, uh, yeah, I don't know, but last year Matt and Byron, Byron was already up here, but Matt had moved up to Indy, and they were like, yo, you guys should move up to Indy, we were like, alright, let's move up to Indy, so, <laughs> now we're here, and it just made the most sense. Yeah. And it works out because in Bloomington, whenever you try and go somewhere, like Louisville or Chicago, it just adds that extra hour of being, yeah. being where it is and so far away from interstates, whereas Indy, you can get to so many different places so much faster. Did you find there was a lot of places in Indy to perform as well, like that, that suited your needs? More than Bloomington, Definitely. for sure. Yeah, because down in Bloomington, there's, I mean, there's tons of venues, but as far as, again, trying to take the approach at like a big scale band that we want to become, the Bluebirds, like the main spot, and then until you have enough clout, the Buskirk Jumbly. But that Even takes that, that's, that's a like, leap yeah, down. that's a huge like. Mm. That's just like you you've made it and it, then made it again and can come it? back and do Bus Buskirk Jumbly. I wish I get some of those that like made it, but it is a yeah. big theater down in Bloomington. Okay. It's a big theater. Um, I mean, yeah. Yeah. I've, yeah, I've just never heard of it, so I'm just. Is it? It's like on Kirkwood downtown. Well, Matt and I will play there for church sometimes. We technically like, do play both Yeah, well, like, <laughs> I guess it would be kind of like the Fountain Square okay. Hall. Mm. Fountain like, Square Theater. Theater. Yeah, theater. Kind of like that. It's that kind of vibe old. And it's the, like an old movie theater that they turned into a performance. performing arts yeah. place. That's awesome. Super, yeah. super cool. So once you fin, what venues were you performing at when you were in Indy? Um, like Hi-Fi, just places like that? Um, so when we first started playing up here, it was just the Mousetrap. Um, which shout out to the Mastrap because I think they're one of the venues around the town that like really aim to get new bands as well as just like bands that are trying to grind and make it happen like into the scene. Um, Mousetrap is great for that. They do so much stuff for people. Yeah, yeah. And then that slowly turned into us playing at the Hi-Fi, which really our first show was opening for Marcus Reznak, which was a... It's kind of a random occurrence that we just got lucky, a good lucky connect on. Um, and then the second show there was the battle. Um, and so, yeah, we've just been trying to build on that momentum since. Was it mostly just opening acts and stuff like that or just doing like kind of small time stuff, trying to get your name out there? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've opened at the Vogue twice. Yeah, once for the Main Squeeze, once for Dumpster Funk. Mm-hmm who is a band from New Orleans with the Neville Brothers in it. Yeah, they're super cool, old school, dope. So, you have a pretty big focus on live performing, but what about studio stuff? Do you have, also, do you want to do the most, a lot of studio releases and stuff like that, recordings? Yeah, absolutely. Um, So we have our first project out right now, it's called The Teardown. Um, It's about, it's coming up on about two years of that one being out, and that was just, Um, It was a good first release for us, especially because it was a lot of the songs we had gotten fully fleshed out and at that time were some of our more popular ones. Were they mostly all like original songs? All all original songs. All original. Um, And yeah, we take a lot of pride in that first project, Um, but since that project we've gone through member changes, we've evolved as a band, and even the way we play some of those songs now is entirely different. Um, Like literally some of them have been changed. Yeah, so. like actually, uh, all dried up. We it's on the on the album. It's a lot more like slower, so. gritty soul, like damn near southern vibes. But now the way we play it, it's still got that like same grit, but it's a lot more upbeat, and I think almost even more funkier, in your face. Yeah, yeah, a little bit funkier and more in your face. Um, and we also have Alex play sax on it instead of a trombone solo. That happens. well, I mean, you just kind of gotta adapt stuff because like you can do a lot of stuff in the studio that you can't necessarily do live. And like we did have Brandon at the time we were recording, so okay. which is a whole nother set of keyboards, and right? So like and all that. songs, we've just had to kind of adapt them to having this crew on stage and making them all work. And 
we can make it work somehow. And do you yeah. think that's just a natural thing? Oh, sorry to interrupt you. Oh, I was gonna say, just another example is Lady in My Dreams. We just brought that one back after not playing it. We completely changed that, like changed the key, changed the arrangement. Yeah, everything about it is different. It's awesome. So do you think that's a natural thing that just has progressed? Just you want it to sound better and better and you think this is yeah. how it will? Absolutely. I, a lot of our songs, they're, they're, it's, we do it almost the complete opposite of everybody. Like. We write songs and then we put them in shows first. We don't have that, oh, we got a song done, we recorded it, it's out, it's our new lead single and it's running up streams. Like the song, we test our songs in, in show. And so we get it to a point that we're confident and we're cool playing it, but that idea is kind of almost still always evolving, um, which is really cool. And also because we've been a band for going on about four years now, it's um, boring. Yeah, some of the songs, you just, it just gets really tiring. Like, we'll probably end up flipping girl at some point. <laughs> so you're always just trying to constantly evolve and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. So yeah. once you play it in front of the thing, is just audience meter kind of what gauges you, like, oh, this song is awesome, and, just how, and also how it feels on stage? Exactly. Yeah, it also makes it just playing in front of people gives you that extra pressure to perform better. So it almost sort of solidifies what the song is. Whereas when you're in, like, the lab, so to speak, or like you're in rehearsal and it's like there's no pressure to get it exactly mm -hmm. right or like, uh, you know, I'm still feeling out what the, what it should be, like what my parts should be for this, but on live, you know, it sort of like forces you to be like, okay, this is it. And then and a lot of times that just like, yeah, that's what you need. That little, that and then you can kind of easily transition right towards the studio from that, like almost seamlessly, right? Yeah. 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 It's a great test too, because I mean, you can tell when the audience is like really liking the stuff and when they're not. I mean, we've had songs that we've wrote, we've rehearsed them for like weeks. We're so excited to play them and we played them and we just got like people staring at us. Just like nothing. Not gonna happen again. <laughs> right. right. Uh, we've, uh, when we have moments where it's like, we're pretty confident in the song, that happens. But after it, we're like, okay, this song sucked tonight but we know exactly why and now we can do it again yeah, yeah, and yeah, test yeah. it for the next show but even those nights like the crowd reacts like they like it oh yeah but like we know we didn't play it to our best you gotta and, have like that, right. almost like the spider sense of just like mm -hmm. oh this is how we can fix it make it even yeah. cooler sometimes things don't even make sense until you play them live you know like matt like matt does a great job at arranging stuff and like Sometimes like he'll play a lick live in a show and then like we'll just learn it as a band and put it into something. Like that sounded like, good, like let's yeah. go. That's yeah. awesome. So the Teardown came out two years ago, so what is your next plan for a studio release? Do you want to have a new studio album with original songs? Absolutely. Um, so right now we've got a bunch of new songs written and we've been doing some of them in some of the shows. Some of them we still haven't shown people. Um, we have plans for our first single. Um, I don't know if we want to say what, what the single will be. Nah, right no now. pressure to reveal cool. anything. Don't I mean, worry. we already know what song we're going to record for our first single once we're... The studio that we plan on recording at is being built right now. Um, it's called Roundtable Studios. Um, so just waiting on Travis and his team to get the whole studio built and prepared. Um, but once that is up and running, uh, we're actually going to be hosting an intimate studio session for people to kind of come out and kind of get to meet us in a different type of environment but still have the music at the forefront but also we are going to be recording our first single there and you know, just getting in there knocking out this project are you excited i mean do you think it's time to kind of absolutely oh, yeah. studio releases absolutely. it's been time <laughs> yeah yeah it's been it's been a very long time coming and again i you know we've been we've gone through so many different changes as yeah. a band as i mean even like i mean we've gone what the project was released when i was 22 like two years yeah, of life adds a lot of different exactly. experience a lot of different things to talk about um having new members adds a different vibe G guitar playing wise adds an entirely different like message almost for sure um, and I mean, drumming too yeah our drumming <laughs> um whole different mm -hmm. vibe. wins and losses so you yeah. think specifically with this group it's like this is a good time to release music yeah i think it's finally come together it's a well. good time to get in there and start like really learning the studio and yeah. learning our sound in the studio and learning what we can do because i think at the end of the day we're all we're always going to be like a great live act i think like when you come to our shows you're going to see that like yeah. we know how to play live i mean we've been doing it our whole lives but like something we need to do is hone in and get into the studio and really learn how to like make a make a record make an album make something classic that's going to 
people are going to listen to in, for the next 50 years, right. 100 years. Type, right. type because stuff. especially you're going to have, whenever they see you live, they'll be like, oh, who is that band? And there's only one out. You know, you, you, can ha you open exactly. so many doors with doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, so I guess kind of in a final segment, I want to transition towards Battle of the Bands. You recently finished second place and had, oh, just ignore it. Just restart that. <laughs> so when that said she called me back. Oh, you, you, I mean, yeah, you did call her. No, we should have answered in the interview, bro. <laughs> hey, what's up? Kind of Alright, so cut back. So in this final segment, I kind of transition want to transition towards Battle of the Bands. You recently finished second place in the competition at the Vogue. So what did you learn from this competition? What was one of your biggest takeaways? I personally not to not to take everything too seriously. Because, I mean, we put a lot of mental, emotional, and, like, physical effort into financial. The, financial effort into this show, into, like, this battle. And, like, I know we took this as serious as could be. Like, we, you know, at the, when we found out the results, like, none of us were actually happy about coming in second place. Like, I think being a little more lighthearted about everything, because at the end of the day, like, in the grand scheme of things, I think we're going to look back and laugh about this battle. <laughs> for, me, for me joining the band like the first round of the battle was like that was me first coming into this band so this is really everything i know so now so gonna, it feels kind of weird to kind of separate that like pressing hard for the battle now this is just like a band yeah it's like, for the student recording right. gigs like the, yeah it's like what's next yeah yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. But i mean other than that did you enjoy being part of it and kind of this oh. cultural event for indie oh yeah absolutely and it it, it gave us a lot of I think it made us be a lot more creative with mm. our like marketing, but also just how we want, how we actually want to present ourselves. Cause like, this is the first, I've, I would say to this point, it was probably one of the most major shows we've played. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, so many eyes on us, our Instagram and our Twitter and our Facebook page, getting so many views. We were doing everything we could to make our personalities and what we actually are as a band be like understood through our marketing. And um, yeah, Gary, I don't know that we've worked harder for any other show or any other yeah, um, Gary V. He t he has he's been doing this like constant post like every day like stop treating your Instagram like a uh, art gallery, and I'm I'm a person that's guilty of that like oh we posted yesterday yeah. there's no way we should post today like oh we but like fuck that like we because we were so determined to win this battle like I didn't give a fuck if yeah we, were we had 30, 30 yeah. posts on our story for that day we po yeah I posted yesterday a cool ass video we got a better cooler video to post today so you're gonna yeah. like it run it up, tell your friends to tag it, all that. Um, I think it I think it put a new kind of fire that already existed in all of us, like kind of in, a, in the pit of our belly to have done all of that and then lost. Um, especially knowing that we gave the show that we wanted to. Yeah. And, and the you work. gave it 110% the whole entire way. And Absolutely. All that good stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, another thing too, it was kind of like a dope moment, even though we lost, I mean like, I remember standing outside, it was like 10 minutes until like we were about to hear the results and Matt was, Matt, me and Matt were just standing there. Matt was like, I was just like pacing around nervous as fuck and Matt's just like, yo, like, just take it in, bro. When, whenever are we gonna be in this moment again? I was like, yeah, I guess you're right. But I mean, at the time, all I wanted to do was throw up. <laughs> <laughs> so with this new fire, do you, are you gonna take that energy all the way in 2020 with future shows? And what, what kind of future plans do you have right now for the band? Oh, bro. That, We're winning Grammys. We're selling out stadiums. <laughs> bro, and like, that's the thing. Like, there was so much focus put on this battle, but we have, even throughout all these past few months, we've been setting up every day. Yeah. So it was, it's just, you know, with or without that band, we still have five dates in, uh, on the East Coast in March. Like, you know what I mean? Is uh, we still have all of these meetings that we've been doing. We still have all of this marketing that we that we want now. Just doing the battle, losing it, it's yeah. just brought more attention. So this was a no way more energy finale of Huckleberry Blonde. No, it's not no, it was way just more. Like, and it, I mean, I, this was just supposed to like yeah. help us along the way. Exactly. And exactly. We'll just have to go. Along Can't miss what you didn't have. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And and this is what I've been telling everybody because everybody's got like the whole oh you know it's just another piece of the story which it is it is. Uh, of course, at the time when I was pissed, I don't want to hear that shit. <laughs> yeah, but like, what I always tell people is like, we already imagined having ten thousand dollars. We already imagined having a tour van before we knew about yeah. this battle. So we already had the plan in motion. It was just we didn't have the money. So you know, 
this battle was supposed to give us it so that we could actually execute it, but now that we don't, it, cool, like, we just gotta go back to that original plan of we don't have this 10,000, but this is what we need, so, like, let's just bust our ass and nothing, get it. Nothing great ever comes easy. That's true. I honestly don't think any band ever got famous off of the Battle of the Bands. Right, and it's like, a, you can't, one event, can't, you can't put that event on a pedestal, you know, you, you exactly. can move on and do all that good stuff. Yeah. So what shows are coming up that people can attend and see you kill it again at? This Saturday at the Mousetrap, uh, we're actually, funny enough, doing another competition, uh, summer camp on the on the road. This so is the revenge show. This is the, <laughs> yeah. hey, we're going to kill it. And we yeah. actually came in second place in this same competition last year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Um, the following Wednesday, we have a show up in Chicago at Shuba's, which is in... Uh, Collab, uh, yeah, an apartment, uh, a partner to Lincoln Hall. Um, that the then that Saturday, the 29th, we're down in Bloomington. We'll be playing at the Bluebird. Um, and then, yeah, March 7th, we are playing a show with one of our really good friends. Her name's Ray Alyssa. She just released a project. It's called Retrospect. Go stream that if you can. Um, she's doing a release party up in Chicago. She's from Chicago, so she wanted us to come up there and be uh, do a guest performance with her. Um, and then right after that, we leave for Philly. We're doing the So Far Sounds in Philly. Um, we have two shows in Boston, um, and then two shows in New York. That's crazy. There's so many cities you guys are covering this year. Yeah. Are you excited to kind of be branching out more on the East Coast and stuff like that? Sir. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we've been hitting New York for the last year and a half. This will be our fourth time out there now. Um, yes. And each time we've been able to add a new venue or at least add another date least add you know more people to the show whatever the case is so yeah we're super excited super awesome. super excited awesome so i have one kind of last question before i ask you shout out your social media and website and stuff like that what kind of advice can you guys as a band give to musicians that are still trying to come up in indie and get a start just play man <laughs> just awesome. find like some people and just play i right. like i don't i mean that's kind of I don't know how to give advice like that. So just go for it. Make sure you have the right the people that are around you that are going to be committed when shit's good and when shit's bad. Um, also, be present. Like, go out to shows. Yeah. Um, like, I always talk with the guys about that. Us going to shows and supporting other people, it makes everyone else like, one, okay, like, we already knew you guys were pretty cool, but now, like, fuck, you came out and supported yeah. me. Like, that's lit. I'm going to come and I'll bring a squad to your shows. And... That gets you in better graces. You can start show swapping with people. Because um, breaking into any scene is tough. But Especially that... in India. I mean, yeah. a hard. It's a very small community of people that are striving to do awesome stuff. That's kind of why I pose the question. I mean, you've been established in multiple cities. So I think people could learn a lot from your kind of experience. Yeah, man. Just don't stop being cool. Being, like, super cool is fucking lame. Like, just yeah. be supportive. Uh, Don't be afraid to just contact people. If you want to get gigs, you got to email people, call them, show yeah, up to their house. Call. Well, don't show up to their house. But. <laughs> <laughs> house calls might be weird. Yeah. yeah. No, we're notorious for that. We send our press kit to people all the fucking Seriously? time. Seriously? Yeah, that's how we got into Rockwell. Yeah. We just yeah. sent our press kit and they were like, Polite yeah. resistance, that's what, that's right. what we did. Worst they can say is no. Awesome. So Huckleberry Funk, thank you again for coming by. I really, really appreciate it. So how can people find you? Uh, on Instagram, we are Huckleberry Funk. Uh, on Facebook, we are just Huckleberry Funk. On Twitter, we are Huckleberry Funk. And our website is HuckleberryFunk.com. We post all of our dates on there. Uh, yeah. Huckleberry oh, Funk. Oh, and our project is on all Huckleberry streaming Huckleberry platforms. Huckleberry. The Teardown, Everywhere. Spotify, Album Music, Title, Napster. Be sure to check it out this Saturday. Wow. Mousetrap, what time? Uh, we 11 play 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock. 11 to 11.40, so don't be late. We only got 40 minutes. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for coming by again. Yeah, thank you, man. Thank you. Thanks.